Hey guys, I'm Garrett from ECL Outdoors. Today I'm gonna be doing a little beginner's lesson on how to clean your rifle. There's hundreds of different ways to do it and everyone's gonna tell you you can do it differently. This is how I do it and some of the guys here at the store do it. It's very basic, very beginner level cleaning. It's not a full teardown, it's just gonna be a quick, a quick field clean. So today we're gonna to be cleaning a Browning X-Bolt 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh, this is actually Ian's gun. He takes it out and does some coyote hunting. It's not overly dirty, but because it's coyote season, it's really miserable, nasty out, snow, rain, whatever. Um, so it's always good after a hunt to bring your firearm in to either get it cleaned or clean it yourself. It's just preventative maintenance. It's really easy to do. So to walk you through some of the stuff you're gonna need to clean, and again, this is just basic beginner stuff, is Hoppies offers this awesome kit. It's a 76 piece kit. It comes with different brushes, swabs, patches, everything you need when you're starting out. Uh, important is to make sure that you get the right size brushes and swatches for your gun. So this one's a 6.5. Um, so we got this 6.5 specific brush for it. Next, you're gonna need patches. So you can use long patches or short patches. These ones are for pistol calibers and for rifle calibers. They work really well for either or. Um, they're just, they're slightly smaller, so you're not pushing a huge swatch through like something you would use for a shotgun. So just showing you the quick difference here. Here's your kind of standard shotgun one, and this is more for a rifle pistol caliber. This one will do you perfectly fine. Either or will work. You can always cut these down to size. Next, you're gonna wanna get a good solvent. I personally like Crudbuster, and this is an aerosol version, so you can just spray it wherever you want. Even comes with the little straw on the side. Uh, Crudbuster works great. It's almost like a brake cleaner for the gun world. Uh, it's safe for all woods and polymer stocks. So you don't have to worry about damaging anything else that way. Um, but it dries everything up. So any grease, grime, gunk that you have in there, this will help dry it off so you can brush it out a lot easier. And it just makes cleaning go so much faster. And then the next one, which is very important, specifically for coyote seasons or any winter hunting that you're gonna do, uh, this is G96. It's kind of an all around cleaner. But the reason that this one is a bit more important is because it's also a, um, a synthetic and it's a weather cleaner. So it's good to up to negative 45. That means that it's not gonna freeze when he's out there coyote hunting. If you use it to lube up your bolt or any of your trigger parts, that lube isn't gonna freeze where you sprayed it and allow those parts to A, move freely and be lubed up. But it's also gonna prevent them from getting stuck or frozen, which is very important for your firing. So the first step in cleaning your firearm and any sort of firearm, doesn't matter what it is, anytime you're working on one of these, you always make sure it's cleared. Even if it's your own gun and you know you've cleared it previously, always do it again just to make sure. So either, depending on the action type, remove the bolt or open the slide up, take your magazine out, give a good feel in, make sure there's nothing sitting there, and then look down the barrel real quick. Yep, it's all clear. It's just, it's a super safe way and it's a good habit to get into when you're working with firearms. So next we're gonna do the barrel or the bore and chamber on this gun. I'm gonna use the crud buster again. Just gonna take the straw, put it into the barrel, give it a quick spritz, both ends, and that's just gonna get all the dirt in there coated a little bit so when I run it through with this rod and brush, um, as I'm pushing through, it's gonna grab that solvent and scrub as I'm going through with it. Now I don't have a patch on here yet, this is just gonna be a run to loosen everything up so when we actually run the rod with a patch through, that's when it'll collect everything. Right now is just to get everything kind of broken up and loosened up on the inside of the barrel. So now that you run this brush itself through a couple of times and you'll notice that I was just passing it through and pulling it back. That step's gonna change when I actually apply these patches now. Uh, when I wrap the patch around the brush, and this is a different method than I think a lot of people will use as well. This is just how I like to do it. Um, when you wrap the patch around it like this, for your first couple of runs, just do the very tip of it and then wrap it around like that. So as you're pushing it through, you're still gonna be breaking up everything kind of behind it as well as when you're pushing it through, the, the actual patch itself is gonna collect a lot of the debris as you're pushing it out. Once it comes through the end though, you're gonna to wanna to take this piece off your brush, 
and not pull the brush back through because then you're bringing all the gunk and grime back through into the receiver and that's just not something you want to do. It's just extra cleaning for you in the end. So after you've run it through a couple of times with the patch just on the end there, go ahead and now wrap the whole brush or as much as it that your patch will cover. And something I didn't mention earlier in the video too is another really good thing to have when you're cleaning guns is a kind of a, a mat like this. It's good for in-range use so your guns don't get scratched up when you're shooting, but it's also really good for when you're cleaning. You can put it on any surface that you want, that you don't want your solvents or your oils to get onto, even though these are both um, wood polymer safe, so that's good for any like household furniture as well. It's just nice to keep all the dirt and grime off that you're, you're putting on these brushes or pulling out of the gun, and it just goes on this mat and you know, they're 20 bucks wherever you go for the most part. So it, it just saves you from cleaning your furniture or anything you're cleaning on afterwards anyways. And as you see, like I just, when I use the aerosol stuff, I just spray it on the patch. If you do that at home, it's gonna get over on whatever surface you're using. And it just, it saves you from having to clean that afterwards as well. So you're gonna push this through, same process as before, remove it once it comes through the other end of the barrel. Pull it back through, but you can see the difference in between kind of the patches when we were starting before. Now, this gun was fairly new to Ian, so it wasn't that dirty. He didn't put many rounds through it, but you can see after pulling it back through with that full coverage brush, it's really just covered in a light layer of dirt versus the sort of heavier spots here. So it's, it's not that bad in this barrel. So I'll pull this through once more, put another clean patch on it and run it through. And if that patch comes out clean, then I'll send it down again with a dry patch to get any remaining um, either oil or um, solvent left in the barrel. So one more spray just to grab any last little bits of dirt. So the rods that we're using are, this is a Hoppies brand rod, and the reason I like the Hoppies brand ones is they have spinning heads on them. So as you're pushing this down the barrel, and if you have the correct brush for that barrel, the rifling inside is gonna grab that brush, and as you're pushing it through, this handle is gonna spin while your rod spins, and it's, it's gonna allow that to actually twist in through with the rifling. And it's really important for when you're cleaning that versus just a straight rod that doesn't spin, it's gonna skip over a lot of spots of rifling and you're actually gonna miss some of the dirt. So having one that spins is a big help and it'll actually make cleaning faster as well. So now that I've run all the wet patches through um, and they're coming out with next to no residue or dirt or grime on them, I'm gonna run a dry patch through. This is just gonna collect any remaining solvent that either didn't get picked up by these or didn't dry out. And it'll also show me if there is any leftover residue. And the spinning rod that I talked about is super important for this step because with the dry patch, it's not gonna bend and form as well as these wet ones will when they're covered in solvent. So having a rod that'll help push, the, push through the barrel and get into the rifling deep is, is really important. So yeah, this patch came through with next to nothing on it. There's a bit of grime, which is probably just from the brush. Um, so we know that this barrel's clean. I'll pull the rod back through, remove the brush. So now that we've Clean the barrel out. I'm just gonna pull it off, make sure I'm in a safe direction. Look through the barrel real quick. Nice and shiny, no dirt, no residue. Look through again from the muzzle end. It looks great. So that portion of it is done. The barrel is clean. And now what we're really gonna focus on is making sure the inside of the chamber is also clean and the magwell. So we're gonna do the magwell here really quick. These usually aren't that dirty, but um, when you get rifles that are shot more and used more often, you, you will collect stuff. And especially if you're out hunting, going through the woods, um, cedar branches, pine needles, like all that kind of stuff can end up sitting in here and it'll prevent you from either loading up a mag or it'll get your magazine dirty. And it's the last thing you want, especially if you're going after some game. So with Ian's rifle here, um, cause he's got a scope on it and it's a bolt action. This magwell goes right through and basically sits above the scope. So all I'm doing right now is I'm just putting a rag in between the scope and the rifle. So when I spray any solvent or any sort of dirt, it's not gonna get on your scope. It's not the end of the world if it does, it's just, it's a little extra additive to help prevent anything from getting on there or any possible damage from the cleaning. So just the quick spurts, We're grabbing our synthetic brush again. Just gonna give it a quick rub through here. Loosen up anything that's sitting on there. 
Use the smaller side for any tighter areas. It, it's a fairly new rifle, so it's not that bad. Um, and then I'm just gonna grab one of these patches and I'll give it a quick wipe and it'll tell me if it's dirty and I need to give it some more scrubbing. And that comes up fairly clean. So there's nothing really coming up from the magwell. You don't really need to put any lube on the mags or in the magwells themselves. It's not a really big moving part of the gun. It's more or less just keeping it clear and clean to prevent any jams or misload. We're gonna clean the inside of the chamber now and the rear of where the bolt goes in. Uh, I'm just gonna throw the scope covers back onto here just in case if I'm spraying or doing any sort of cleaning around it, I don't wanna damage the lenses or get any product on them themselves. So for this one again, I'm gonna go back to the Cred Buster. Just spray a little bit in. Quick scrub in through here. Once you give it a good scrub there, it, and that's really just to agitate any sort of dirt or grime you have sitting in there. It's gonna pull it out of the little tight crevices. Grab your cleaning swatch and you're just gonna rub that patch around. And you can see here, it's already just from a little pass collecting dirt that's sitting in here. So I'll pull that through a couple of times. So it's definitely worth doing a scrub down now with uh, a bigger brush. So the good thing about getting a kit like this from Hoppies is because it comes with all the different caliber sizes you'll really need, especially just as a beginner, is yes, it came with one for the bore of the rifle, but there's not really any specific chamber brushes you can get just with these basic kits. Um, so for bolt actions, what I like to use is um, either a 12 or a 20 gauge bore brush. And you can see here, it's actually fairly similar in size to this bolt. So when you throw the bore brush on here, you're just scrubbing the inside of the chamber and where the bolt runs through. So this will grab anything that I missed with that little swatch. It'll pull it out. I'll just reapply some more solvent to the inside of the bore when I run this through. And then pull a patch through it again and that should collect everything else that we need. Now, again, Ian's rifle here isn't super dirty. It's fairly new. This is more or less just a preventative clean and he did fire a couple of rounds through it afterwards. So you're not gonna see a lot of stuff coming out of here, but if you were doing it for a rifle, say that you'd inherited and had been sitting for a while or something you've put a lot of rounds down range with, then this is very important because if you have any dirt or grime sitting in here from shooting, it's gonna prevent you from getting jams or from internal wear. Any sort of dirt or grime that you have in here, any of that particle stuff is gonna catch on your bolt. It's gonna wear on the inside and it's gonna wear on your bolt. So cleaning this is just as important as cleaning the rifling and the grooves out in your barrel. So now that we got the whole rifle cleaned out from the chamber to the barrel, we're just gonna lube everything back up. If you did it properly, you shouldn't have anything wet left inside of here. You wanted to get that all dried out and all the residue out. So a couple products you could use is, this is just a squirt bottle version of kind of what's in this stuff, minus the fact that this will freeze. And be very careful when you're buying those products, especially if you're using a gun like Ian's here for coyote hunting, is if you're buying a lubricant that isn't rated for anything below zero, it could freeze up on you and that'll cause a misfire when you're shooting. So this is stuff I like to use for my summertime shooting. This is stuff that I'll use for the wintertime because it is rated and it even shows a little symbol right here. So for your bolt, just give the head a quick spritz. You want to get in where the firing pin goes to make sure that's going to move freely on you. And you want to make sure that the bolt head where it's going to be making any sort of contact with the inside of your chamber. And you can tell that really easily by if you look closely on the bolt, you can see some wear marks here and you can see it wearing on the head itself. So you want to make sure those spots have lube more than anything else. So quick spritz, that's all you're going to need. Just work it around right on the bolt head and on the bolt itself. And then in your rifle, same thing. So just spread that around, you can use your finger. It doesn't have to be a crazy amount because then the more lube that you have in there, yes, it's gonna help with function of your rifle, but it's gonna collect more dirt. So only put it where you really are gonna need it. 
and then reinsert your bolt. Make sure everything functions and moves smoothly. And that's it. That's a very basic tutorial on how to clean and re-lube up a firearm. I'm Garrett from East Hill Outdoors. Stay tuned. We're going to be posting more of these videos on tips and tricks of either cleaning, maintenance, preventative maintenance, and repairs on firearms.